In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this Polaroid effect in Adobe Photoshop. As you can see, it's a real fun way to give your images a real 70s look. And it's something that you can do on any image. So let's go back to the beginning and I'll walk you through the process. I've cropped this. It's not square, but it's close to square, just so it can fit into the Polaroid. You don't have to add the Polaroid to the image. You can just edit these so they look like a Polaroid. So the first thing you want to do is duplicate the background. So press Control or Command J, and that will duplicate the background. And that just means then that any edits that we do, we're not doing it to the original, and we're not going to destroy anything or accidentally save it. So that's fine. So let's label this, and we can just call this working. Come down to the bottom, and we want to add a curves adjustment. Now, because Polaroids are old, and they're aged, we want to mimic that. So come down to the bottom here, which is your blacks, and we want to start pushing this up. And what we're actually doing is, is we're crunching the blacks. So we're giving a bit of a faded look. So somewhere around there looks pretty good. And then we can come to the top here and we can do the same with the whites. So we can just slowly pull this down. So let's come down to the blacks and let's just add a little bit more contrast back in so we don't lose too much detail and then in the midtones we just want to push them up a little bit to around there and experiment with this because you can get lots of different looks so there's no right or wrong way to do this and let's just click in the middle here and this will just give us a little bit more control in that middle area so in the greys so you can see this has given us that faded look that we want Okay, so let's come back down and let's add a, another curves adjustment. And um, what we're gonna do in here is actually go into the different channels, the different color channels here, and we're going to adjust them just to give it a little bit more of an aged look. So let's come to the blacks within the reds and we just wanna push that up slightly, not too much. You don't wanna go too far. Come to the whites and just pull them down a little bit. And then within the greens, we want to do the opposite to that. So we're going to come to the blacks here and we're just going to pull them down. And then we're going to go to the whites here and just push them up a little bit. And just take your time with this. Don't go too far with them because if you push these too far, then it can look a little bit odd. So I'm just going to pull them reds down a little bit there. So just play with them, tweak them but just don't go too extreme. And then let's go to the blues. And within the blues, we're gonna crunch the blacks and the whites, and that's gonna give us that, that faded look. So we're just gonna pull the blues up, and you can push this a little bit higher, and then let's pull the whites down a little bit as well. And you can see we're starting to get that Polaroid look. And let's have a look at the before and after of that. So this is, our original and then we've got our faded look and then we've got our colors which again we've been crunching and just adjusting so we can get this specific look again each picture will be individual so you just need to tweak and play until you're really happy and you'll get different tones and different looks depending on how far you push them so this technique is actually cross processing and that's an old photography technique that we used to use where we would shoot on positive films or transparencies and then develop them as negatives and you would get this specific look. And it was quite yellow biased, so that's why I've made mine slightly more towards the yellow, just to make it look a little bit more realistic. So the next thing we want to do is try and emulate light leaks. And it's something that's seen on Polaroids all the time and it's it gives it a real authentic look. So come down to the bottom here and come to solid color. and what we want to do is look up to this sort of spectrum up here. So you could go with pinks, you could go with reds, you could go with blues, depending on what you want. Let's go with a sort of magenta coming into red, into pink, that kind of area around there, something like that. Press OK. And we want to change the blend mode to soft light. So bring it down to there and then come to the opacity. And we just want to pull this down. So somewhere between 15 and 25% usually looks good. So I'm going to do this around 21, 22%. 
So what we want to do is just take this away from some of the main subjects. We want to make this uneven so it looks like light leaks. So the first thing you want to do is select D on the keyboard. That will make sure that your background colors are black and white. And if you press X, that will change the foreground and background color there. So just make sure it's on black because we want to be selecting areas and removing them. So then come up, you can select the brush tool, you can even press B on the keyboard or come up to there and select it. And we want to make sure the hardness is at 0%, so a soft round brush. I'm going to push this flow back up to around 85%. And I want to make the brush bigger, so I'm just using my brackets keys on my keyboard. You can also make a brush bigger by changing the size here. And then let's make sure we're actually on the layer mask there. So let's just make this brush bigger. And what we want to do is just start painting away. So somewhere around there, you can see I've just gone in and splodged it. You can see there. So the next thing is let's bring this flow right down and let's just go over some of the other areas just to make it a little bit more blended and bring it down to around 3%. Again, just going over these areas there and that's just gonna give us a better blend. And you can see there how much we've taken away. So it's mainly on the outside edges. So let's do the same again. Let's add another solid color. And this time let's come down and add more of a yellow Select OK, and again, let's bring the opacity down to around 25% and change the blend mode to soft light. Using the same principle with this layer mask here, let's get rid of some of the color. So let's push this flow back up quite high. And let's just select areas like that. And then let's bring this flow right down again. And once more, really, really, really low, just so we get a nice blend. And if you do wanna add stuff back in, add color back in, you can just switch the color on there to white, bring the flow back up, and then you can paint it in. So depending on what you want and how you want the image to look, you can really mess around and get this precisely, exactly how you want it to be. So I'm gonna actually add a little bit of yellow back into that and just take some out of around here and just play around with it so I get it exactly how I want. So you can take your time with that and really mess around and get this precise. So I'm just gonna come in and just take it away from the eyes a little bit and the mouth. There we go. So you can see that that's given us this lovely light leaks. Now what you can do is with these two light leaks that we've created is if you hold the shift key down, so you've got selection of both there, press control command J, that would duplicate everything. And when you duplicate everything, that just gives you a harder look. So you can then come back up here with these and we can just change the opacity if we want to, just to bring them down a little bit more just so we get a little bit more of a, an edge with that. And you can see that these are different opacities to these ones here. They're a little bit softer. And again, we can just pull these down if we want to or push them up. So depending on what you want. So I think somewhere around there looks good. The next thing we want to do is come back down to our working layer there and press Control Command J. So we've got another layer selected there. Come up to filter and then go to blur and then Gaussian blur. And what we want to do is just add some blur to this image because Polaroids were never sharp. Um, they always come out a little bit soft. So we just want to try and again, emulate that. So select that and press okay. And then what we can do is we can actually create a layer mask on that. So do that. And again, using the technique like we did up here, we can bring some of this back. So I'm going to just go over some areas that I want to be sharp. So I've done that. I've kind of gone over and just selected her eyes and the areas that I want to bring back, but I've actually gone a little bit too far. So I'm gonna switch it back to the white and I'm gonna bring the flow down just to blur it again a little bit more around there. And I'm gonna switch back to black. And what I'm gonna do is just come in and make the eyes a little bit sharper and the lips. So 
or somewhere around there. That gives us a nice Polaroid look. It's soft, out of focus, but we've just got that attention on the eyes there, which is really important, especially for a portrait. We could as well just bring back some detail in like the hair here if we wanted to. Again, it's entirely up to you if you want to bring back detail on sequences and things like that on the dress. Um, maybe some on the gloves there because it's closer up here. So you can really emulate a shallow depth of field as well and just get everything that you want. There, yeah, so that looks good. That's given us enough blur, I think. You can see the before and after of that. That's worked really well. So the next thing we want to do is add some dust and scratches effects to the picture. So I'll put a link in the description of where you can download these particular dust and scratches. So come to File and then go to Open and then select the one that you want. And you can see that's opened up in Photoshop. So what we want to do is press Control Command A to select all, and then Control or Command C to copy it. Or the other thing that you can do is just use the move tool, click in the middle, come up, and let go. And that will give you the image overlay. So let's move this around so we're at 90 degrees. And I'm just going to pop this up to the top here. I'm not worried too much if I stretch it or if it's out of portion because it doesn't matter because they're scratches and I do like to go over the whole image a little bit more. Press enter and then if you come up to the blend mode you can see what happens when you start going through these so you can select different options. What you want to be looking at is either screen or lighten depending on what you want and the severity. On this one I'm going to select lighten just because I think that gives us the best look overall. And you can then bring the opacity down if you want to, just to get a little bit of a more natural look. And if you find that you've got areas that you don't want to have scratches on, for instance, uh, as an example, across the eye there, you can come down, make a new layer mask, go to your brush tool, and again, using that technique we've been doing, just come over and brush out the areas that you don't want to be affected. So let's just get rid of that on there and you can see what that's done. And that's just getting rid of this tiny, tiny little dots on our eyes, which I don't want, but the rest would be fine. So let's just bring this opacity down a little bit to around there. And you can also add a filter to this so we can go to blur, we can go to Gaussian blur and we can add half a pixel say OK and that just gives us a bit more of a cohesive look with the fact that the image is slightly blurred that just helps a little bit. So once you're happy with that you can leave it as that that can give you your your final image and you can see the before and after is there so it looks quite realistic. If you want to then put this onto a Polaroid background then again I will put a link in the description of where you can download this so what I'm going to do is just come up and select merge visible so then come to the Polaroid and you can see here this is where we're going to place our image so what I want to do is press control command A to select all the image control command C to copy come to the Polaroid control or command V and that will paste everything. So let's press Control Command minus just to zoom out. Control Command T to transform, and then we can hold the Shift key in, and that will just keep everything in proportion for us. And we can just line this up. Now, there's a few ways you can do this. You can just literally lay it over, and it doesn't have to be exactly within where the Polaroid is, but if you want to do that, then you can come to the layers and just bring the opacity down and you can kind of see where that line is going to be and you can just lay it over. So if we wanted to do that, we could, we could line it up and then I could stretch the image if I wanted to just to give it a more authentic look. And just bring the opacity back up and just press enter and that will give you your final look. The other thing that I did do was to make this look a little bit more realistic was I actually went back, went to the history before I merged everything 
and come to the layers panel and on the scratches here I just used that again now you can just go and grab the scratches from here um, you can do it either way depending on what you want to do so all we need to do is copy that so control command C control command V and that will lay everything over for us and the reason why I do that is because uh, copy it from this image is because I've already changed the blend mode on that so control command T just to transform and let's just pull this back up here and let's try and get this where it was around there and what I'm going to do is spin this round just to try and get a bit of a more realistic look so it's not duplicating the scratches on the other side there so we can hit enter to that and we can bring the opacity up and just see where that lies so yeah you can just play around until that's lined up perfectly and the other thing is is that if you want to take them scratches away from the face then with this layer mask here you can do that you can just come in and just push this flow up so we're just getting rid of the double scratches so it's not doubling up on our actual picture this is just for the Polaroid and you can also play with the different blending modes to get different looks so let's just make sure there's none on there and you can see that there is just some little bits of textures in there and you can certainly come and create a curves adjustment clip in mask and this is just going to enable you to just get these scratches up a little bit so they pop so that's it so then come to layer flatten image and that will give you your final polaroid look and that's how you do it so i hope that's helped i hope you've enjoyed that it's a fun project to do and like i said in the beginning you can do this on any image and uh, it looks pretty cool and interesting if you want to you don't have to like i said put it onto a polaroid you can just keep your images as they are and they'll still look really interesting but have a play see how you get on and i'll see you in the next video take care bye bye